When I was studying for the SAT back in high school, I had no idea what I was doing. I eventually got a perfect score, but it took way longer than it should have, and I wasted so much time. And after tutoring for 11 years, I essentially figured out what I think is the best way to study for the SAT. And today, I want to give you guys four of my best tips so that you guys can reach your target score quickly, successfully, without having to make the mistakes that I have made. So guys, these tips are going to be in the order of zero importance. So every single tip that I think is very important. And if it's your first time here, my name is John. I've been an SAT math tutor for the past 11 years. And my specialty is taking a student who's currently in four, five, 600 range to 700 plus by their next SAT through online program, SAT Math Accelerator, link in the comments. So my very first tip is for you to hire a tutor. And some of you guys might be thinking, what the hell, John? This is not what I came for. This is not what I'm going to do. I'm not going to hire you. Are you kidding me? Okay, so first of all, my calendar is full until next January, so I can't even work with you. And second, I used to think the exact same way. But only after I was done with the SAT and I was already in college, that's when my perspective completely changed. And here's why. So when I was in high school in ninth grade, my parents signed me up for this SAT Hagwon, which is like a Korean word for SAT Preparation Academy, also known as the SAT Prep Prison, because you have to go there from 9 a.m. to 6 p.m. Monday through Saturday. And that's essentially what everybody was doing in my community. Price-wise, it cost about $2,000, which is equivalent to about $3,000 today. So I told my parents, guys, look, this is ridiculous. We're not paying $2,000 so that I can go to a place and someone reads off of the textbook. I can figure this all out. You guys just have to trust me. Like they're literally teaching you the same thing that's in the book. What's the point of going? So somehow I was able to convince them and not go there during the summer. But in reality, I just didn't want to go there like 9 a.m. to 6 p.m. Monday through Saturday, bro. That's like worse than school. So instead, I went to the library from 9 a.m. to 5 p.m. I guess it's a little bit better. So over the summer, I went through a bunch of these SAT prep books. And after three months of prepping on my own, my score didn't go up. And my Parents, furious. It wasn't probably for another year and a half until I figured out how to study for the math section, what, understand what the exam is all about, and eventually get a perfect score. And the problem there is that, you see, when you're trying to go from 500 to 800, right? When you're trying to go from point A to point B, there are multiple ways to get there, right? And the fastest way to get there is by going through a straight line from here to here. But the problem that I had without a tutor is that I was trying this, I was trying that. I had no idea what I was doing. I didn't know what was working and what was not working, what was helping me or what was wasting my time. So instead of going on a straight line, I was going zigzag, going this, this, that, going backwards, coming back, circling around, and eventually got to the destination. And it took way longer than it should have. And how a tutor can help you with this is that they're going to come in and tell you exactly what you need to do because they have gone through the process just multiple, multiple times. And with me and my students, no matter what your current score is, whether it be four, five, 600 or 700 plus, and you're trying to get to the perfect score, whatever it is, I know the exact set of problems that you're facing. I know the exact set of solutions and I know exactly what you need to do to solve those problems and get to your target score. So tutors essentially going to save you so much time so that you can go from point A to point B in a straight line. And if you're studying for the SAT, this is a quick tip. If you're using Khan Academy and you're currently in four, five, 600 range, you're making a big mistake because the purpose of Khan Academy is to give you guys a set of practice questions ranging from level one to level four. But if you're currently in four, five, 600 range, you shouldn't be doing practices. You should be learning the concepts. Instead of doing percent questions, you first have to understand how percent works. But most people are slaving away on Khan Academy, doing all these practice questions without having full understanding of the concept and they're wondering why is my score not going up after two months of preparation you're essentially going like backwards you don't want to do that the biggest time waster on the SAT is that students are doing the wrong things at the wrong time and they have no idea that they are doing it wrong but if you have a trustworthy and reliable tutor that you can work with then that person can guide you through the whole process and get you there as quickly as possible this is especially true in high school because you only have limited time and you have to divide that time up well and apply towards SAT GPA extracurriculars essay and all the different parts of application. So use your time wisely. And the second tip is for you to avoid catching two birds with one stone. And that quote is usually the other way around, but it's especially true on the SAT. SAT has this thing called super scoring. And how it works is that let's say you take SAT twice, right? First time you did amazing on the reading and writing section, but you proof it out on the math section. But on the second exam, you poo pooed out on the reading and writing section, but you did amazing on the math section. And when colleges look at your application, what they see is not the total score for each exam, but the highest score from each section. And they create a super score from those two exams. And what this means is that you don't have to try to get the highest score for both sections at the same time, because the exam itself is about four hours long. And we already know that our brain's not cut out for that. Oh, you can focus for four hours. It's just me. 
Well, we know what? That's good news because not every colleges are going to take super scoring. The only two major exclusions are going to be one, the top Ivy League schools, and two, the California schools like UCLA, Berkeley, Stanford, USC. If it's in California system, they're not going to take super scoring. But other than that, 99% of the schools are going to take it. So instead of trying to catch both reading and math section at the same time, simply focus on one section at a time, get it out of the way, and then move on to the next section. Be strategic about it. And tip number three is to live in a reality. See, this always happens about two, three weeks before the next SAT. I get a bunch of emails saying, John, I'm currently at 1100 and I got two weeks left and I need 1500 on the exam day. What do I need to do? I can get it done. Just tell me what I need to do. So to be straight with you, 400 point jump in two weeks is just not possible. If someone told you that they can do that for you, send me his email because I need it too. One of the main reasons that people get stressed out on SAT is that they set up unrealistic expectations. On average for my students, it takes about two months to go from 500 to 700 plus on the next SAT. So when you realize that, okay, it's going to take me two months to really see the results, then after two weeks of preparation and you don't see any improvements, you're going to be okay. If you realize that it's going to take you about two months to see any significant improvement in your score, then let's say you don't see any improvements after two, three weeks of preparation. Instead of getting stressed out and getting disappointed and wanting to give up and go work at McDonald's, you're going to tell yourself, hey, this is completely normal. I just need to chip away at the work that I need to do. And eventually my score is going to go up. So do realize that it's going to take you some time and have the correct expectation and your journey is going to be less painful. And the last tip, and this is my personal favorite, and that is you are like a boat. Are you serious, John? Are you calling me fat right now? No, let me explain. So let's say that you are on a boat and you're going on a straight line. And let's say you make a five degree turn, which is like a very small turn. At that exact moment, you're probably not going to feel anything. It's going to feel about the same. But after about one, five, 10 years of going on that boat, you realize that because of that five degree shift, your boat is going on a completely different direction. The choices that you make today may seem small now and you might not feel the difference, but in one, five, 10 years in the future, it's gonna have a major impact on you. And that's exactly what high school is like. The high GPA you try to maintain today, the high score you're trying to get on the SAT and not going out on the weekends and not partying and instead staying home and studying, all these things may seem negligible now, but it's gonna change the trajectory of your boat for the rest of your life. So you have to realize that there is actually a long life ahead of you outside of high school and you want to focus on making long-term decisions instead of giving into the short-term pleasures. If you don't sacrifice for your goals, your goals will become the ultimate sacrifice. If you're studying for the SAT, hope to see you inside the accelerator and I'll see you guys on the next video.